the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth one more day being renewed to the praise of the glory of our lord and savior jesus christ through him to lord god the father the honor so that we could be the true products of all the kinetics and the quality of privileges in Christ in the divine energy and the divine health being renewed in the post resurrection days of our lord today being the ninth day of his appearance many of the people may think it is in the first century and it is indeed the first century but we are looking upon to think and to consider and to honor it not for any legalism or for any ritual but to make known to the people that this 40 days which our lord was on this earth after his resurrection was consisting of a main theme the theme of great accuracy about the kingdom of god being taught the kingdom of god which today many of the people do not understand that it is the power of god which executes the plan of god the protocol plan of god and god himself is responsible for any spiritual achievements in christian life have caused a fatal error among the lives of many christians today in the church christians are considering the church as a social club to come and expose what they have achieved in their life materially even the pastors are preaching today to tell if you come to me lord is going to bless you materially in this manner in that manner and people love this material things of this earth rather than the spiritual things of the heaven whom so ever our lord receives for discipline he scourges them he chastens them and whosoever wants to live a godly life will be suffered for persecution that's what the bible written and that's what the bible teaches to us when we are there in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit because this great thing the mind of christ which we cannot decode it could be decoded only by the mental ministry of lord god the holy spirit when he controls us by the power of our priesthood when he confess our sins to rebound and get back into fellowship but men do not know what is rebound men do not know what is the power of the controlling ministry of lord god the holy spirit men in fact even indeed do not know what is the baptism of lord god the holy spirit because many of the so called pentecostal or fundies they have really exchanged the true ministry of lord god the holy spirit into a lie by proclaiming the things which are not in the bible telling that baptism of the holy spirit should have you on second experience and which is nothing but gibberishly jumping around and talking around in tongues which is not only seized in the ad 70 of 0070 of the first century what we are talking about but now after 70 ad when they are practicing it it is a duplication 
and of not only just a duplication, but it is a blasphemy of character towards my Christ. Failing to correct themselves to look that the permanent spiritual gifts mentioned for us in Ephesians 4 makes us to emphasize now to change our thinking towards the mind of Christ. To be exactly the way how our Lord was on this earth and to live a life truly honoring Him on this earth, witnessing for Him on this truth. But today the fund is they have thought it would be better for us when we gibberishly jump around, talk around in tongues. And they have started their own missionary methods of telling. If I am an apostle, I am laying my hands upon you. Then he will talk speaking in tongues. And now here it is not an apostle, it is some bishop or reverend or some clerk who do not know the word of the Lord. And as he lays his hand upon them, we hear many testimonies when told. What the congregation will think if we don't gibberishly talk with unintelligible expressions of emotional ecstasy. They will think this man is out of fellowship and this person, in order to safeguard his fellowship with them, he gibberishly talks some words and he falls down. And they call, he has taken the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, I have achieved one more. But when the vocal cords has been controlled by the Engastramutas demon, they are definitely going to blaspheme the character of my Christ. This man, ignorantly, in their arrogance, want to learn and say, we have the real experience of the Holy Spirit which is not at all concerned with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There were excuses in the Corinth. There may be excuses in the Thessalonica. And there may be excuses even in Galatian time. But after the completed canon revealed for us in Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians, followed by Revelation 1, 2 and 3, there is no more no excuses for you and for me, dear brethren. Take it granted. No excuses to claim. No excuses to think. No excuses to beg. Or plead ignorance at the judgment seat of Christ. There will be only one thing you need to answer to Lord. Why have you not been in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? That's it. No, he not at the moment of salvation. Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Lord God, the Son. Lord God, the Father. Have made an abode in you. And in order to be in fellowship with him, it requires truth. That's why our Lord showed in John 4, 24. Those who worship me must worship him in spirit and in truth. Spirit in the Son's filling of the Holy Spirit, not the activated human spirit, but the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, controlling that activated human spirit. That is the spirit. That is meant to say the Holy Spirit. When you are in the controlling power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and when you learn the word, you need to worship Him. That is what proskune. These both go hand in hand to the great worship of Jehovah. Worship Him in spirit, in the filling of the Holy Spirit, plus truth. Many men have not known the simple dogmatical statement of fact. And rather, many men are interested to look, which is not at all concerned in the word of the Lord. This is spirit is emotionally, gibberishly jumping and dancing, which is no way concerned to the Bible. Bible, it isn't for them, or the practices what they're doing to Bible, they're aliens. And not only thus, they are leading many people into astray. Their unique spiritual life being devoured. The concept of dispensations not being taught with proper isagogical, categorical, and exegetical expression of the word is not been thoroughly trained, is not been thoroughly explained, is not been thoroughly made known. What are the reasons behind this? Ignorance and above all arrogance like the diatrophies who have been there in the first century. Today they are ample in our pulpits. 
We ignore the biblical exposition of Bible teaching in the pulpits. We ignore the sound exegesis in the pulpits. Who might have not even heard in their entire life what is isagogics or categories or exegesis of the subject. And it is of a very great pain for us to tell to you all again and again that by the time you need to be communicators of the word and you are not. You are something which the Bible doesn't recognize at all. But you are something in the eyes of men to say so that the men should think and fear you and you are saying that you have been given the bona fide gift and you are losing everything, not only your physical life, but you are losing the great glory of honor of Jehovah on this earth. This great glory of honoring of Jehovah on this earth is the greatest work that could be laid down upon our shoulders. And it is indeed not only for the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, but it is indeed for every believer because they are being called to be a royal ambassador for Christ. And there can never be any compromise on this regard. You cannot compromise. When Lord himself has honored his word above his name, then who are we to stop that? Who are we to become a hurdle for that? Who are we that we are not able to understand what it could really mean to honor him on this earth? You may have XYZ reasons, but Lord looks only one thing, where you in the fellowship of Holy Spirit or not. When you were there in the free will of your evolution, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the confession of your sins through rebound and getting back into the work, resuming back your unique spiritual life, That is what you are going to stay in the divine dinosphere, the sure place of foundation where our Lord puts. And in that place you are going to learn doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. Lord God, the Holy Spirit takes only doctrine to teach to you. It doesn't take anything else apart from that. It wants to cleanse the garbage that is there in your soul. It doesn't worry about anything else apart from cleansing the garbage in your soul. And if you think you have better ideas than this by gibberishly jumping around, dancing around, talking around in tongues, let Lord help you. Because God is not a respecter of persons, even in fact, even indeed it is the case with me as well. Those who honor him, Lord is going to honor them back. And that honoring should be in the right way, right method. When apostles and prophets have done their work in writing the scriptures for us and completed it, Evangelist tells about the gospel to the unbelievers and the past teacher trains up in the church every believer to the perfection of completion in the knowledge of Christ so that we also could be in the same manner or the same like stature of Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Dear brethren, one more day is renewed today again for us. We are enjoying the grace of our Lord. But be remember that you should not use this grace of our Lord in vain. Think over these issues as we shall continue in the next day. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will return us. Because Lord, it is you that thou shalt hold in thy hand the seven stars. It is you that thou shalt treat among the seven golden lampstands. And it is you who are going to establish the churches as well as the pastors. Help us, O Lord, to look upon thy truth and to thy glory and to thy honor. We don't have anything greater things on this earth to be worried about than to worry that are we really honoring thy word or not. If God could be for us, who can be against us? We should only worry if the enemy for us, because of our hardness of our heart, is turning out to be our Lord God Almighty. But since we walk in thy fellowship, since we confess our sins and get back into thy fellowship, Lord, when you are with us, who can be against us? Any world can get along with us, with them together, thinking together as a confounding part and try to really confound us. But they are nothing, O Lord, because it is you who indwells in us. And when you are with us, and when we are in thy fellowship by the confession of our sins, by not grieving, not squelching, but living and walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then we are mightier than anyone who could be on this earth. Including, when in fact, indeed, Satan, which could be absolutely trampled down on our feet. To this extent, we pray, Lord, help us to stabilize in thy word alone, and none else we can recognize apart from thy word. We thank thee for this great life that thou hast chosen for us.
We thank thee for this everything that thou hast given for us. Because there is nothing on this earth that we can desire apart from thy salvation, thy doctrine, and if it is in thy grace, the right woman. Father, we thank thee for these things, for the burden laid down upon our shoulders. We thank thee and we pray for each and every believer that thou was going to give to us to our ministry. So that, Lord, they could be really be worthy for thy glory at the judgment seat of Christ. Through this section, we pray that God get the whole spirit enlighten us and challenge us. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.